Lewis structures, drawing equivalent resonance structures. Okay, so before we get started with actually drawing equivalent resonance structures, let's just review what they are. So in order to review this, let's talk about ozone. Okay, so here is one Lewis structure that could be drawn for ozone. Okay, but if we were to have another person draw the Lewis structure for ozone, they might put the double bond on this side and move a lone pair over to this oxygen like we see in this structure instead. Okay? And there's no reason to put the double bond on one side versus the other side. All the atoms are the same, everything's equivalent. And so this is a case where we can draw two equivalent resonance structures for the ozone molecule. Now, which one is technically correct for this? Well, the answer is that they both are. So both of these resonance forms are present as a superposition. So they both exist at the same time. We can also call them an average or a hybrid or a composite. But basically, they're a superposition of two different structures. Here's a composite structure that shows you what that looks like. So basically, here we have our oxygen atoms, and we have the delocalized lone pair included as this hash line showing a partial bond on each side. So that's showing those delocalized electrons. Also notice that we have now split up that formal charge, so now we have partial formal charges also. So we're going to talk about this partial bond order and the partial formal charges later on in the presentation. Basically, how do we know that this superposition is correct? How do we know that both of the structures contribute to the real bonding picture? Well, it's because those oxygen-oxygen bond lengths are measured experimentally and they're observed to be the same length. Okay? So this composite picture gives us a way to visualize both of those resonance forms at the same time. Okay. So why do we need equivalent resonance structures? Well, basically because one Lewis structure cannot accurately describe the bonding of delocalized electrons. So we can think of it this way, where this pair of electrons, the one that makes the double bond on this side in ozone, is actually smeared out or delocalized over this whole region. Okay? So basically we have one pair of electrons that are delocalized. And with Lewis structures, the only way that we can really accurately describe this bonding or this delocalization is to draw both of the resonance forms that are possible. Sometimes there will be more than two. So basically, that's the only way that we can really show those delocalized electrons. So if I were to draw only this structure, that would be incorrect because that's saying that this oxygen is double bonded. It's a full double bond and this one is only a single bond when in actuality they're each one and a half bond order as opposed to two and one. And so we'll talk about that a little bit more also. And one final important thing to mention about equivalent resonance forms is that we always connect them with this double-headed arrow. Now that doesn't mean that half the time it, the molecule looks like this and the other half the time it looks like this. No, you have to visually place one on top of the other to get that one and a half bond order on each side. Okay, so what is a partial formal charge? Well, basically, it's, it's the same thing as the regular formal charge that we were talking about earlier, but now we have to smear out that formal charge between two atoms, okay? So basically what we're going to do is, is divide it. We're going to take the number of charges on the equivalent atoms. So in that case, these two oxygens are equivalent, okay? And they're equivalent because those are the two that are involved in this resonance, all right? And then we're going to divide it by the number of equivalent atoms, okay? So what you want to do is choose one of the structures. I'm going to choose this one, but you could choose this one, get the same answer. And we're going to take the charge on the equivalent atoms, so the sum of the charges, so negative 1 plus 0 is just negative 1, of course, and divide it by the number of equivalent atoms, which is 2. So the partial formal charge on these oxygens is negative one-half. 
Okay, so what about bond order? Okay, now I mentioned that the bond order was one and a half. How did I know that? Well, you basically use a similar procedure as to the partial formal charge, and th but this time we're going to take the number of bonding pairs. So you're going to count up each one of these bonds individually. Okay, we're going to use one resonance form to do that. So one, two, three, three bonding electron pairs divided by two equivalent bonds. These are the two that are involved in resonance. And so that's going to give us a bond order of three halves or one and a half. Okay, so again, it's always important to choose one of the resonance forms for the calculation, and it does not matter which of the two equivalent resonance forms you choose. And the other thing to remember is make sure that you count each individual bond in the double bond. So one, two, three. So that's three bonding electron pairs. Okay, so let's do a practice example. Okay, so now what you should do is draw the resonance forms for the polyatomic ion carbonate. Okay, so it's going to have equivalent resonance forms, and you should pause the presentation and try this. And then you're going to depict those delocalized electrons using equivalent resonance forms. And then after that, you want to calculate the carbon oxygen bond order and the formal charges on all of the atoms in the structure. Okay, so let's go through this step by step, and hopefully you have some drawings to compare to, okay? So for steps one and two, using our Lewis structure drawing steps, we want to count up all the valence electrons contributed by all the atoms in the molecule and establish atomic connectivity, i.e., how do the atoms all hook together, okay? So for a carbon, carbon contributes four. Each oxygen contributes six. And then don't forget, we have a negative 2 charge on that ion, so we have to add two more electrons. And that's going to give us 24 electrons total. Once we connect everything together, so we're going to use two, four, six electrons in the connectivity. Okay, so we've used six valence electrons so far. So let's go to step three. And now we're going to add lone pairs to the outer atoms to complete octets on all those oxygens until we run out of electrons, okay? So we've used 6, 2, 4, 6. So we're going to do 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, okay? So we have used all of the electrons now at this point. And now we're going to check each atom and see if they all have octets. Okay, and we notice that carbon does not have an octet. Okay, so since the carbon does not have an octet and we do not have any electrons, any more electrons to add to the central atom, we're going to have to do something else. Okay, so this is step four. In this case, we don't have any remaining electrons to add to the central atom. So we're going to have to move electrons and form multiple bonds to obtain these octets. Okay, so First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this electron pair, I'm going to lasso him, and I'm going to make a double bond right there. Okay? So now let's look at the look at each individual atom. So two, four, six, eight. That one has an octet. This one has an octet. This one has an octet. And carbon has an octet. So now we've obeyed the octet rule. Okay? Now, what about formal charge? Okay? So we're going to see... So this oxygen, three lone pairs, and split this bond. So seven electrons assigned, seven electrons assigned, six electrons, and four here. So let's go to the next slide and do that. Okay. Let's go ahead and assign the formal charge to this structure. Okay. And so we're going to end up with negative one on this oxygen, negative one on this oxygen, zero on this one, and zero on carbon. Okay, so again, make sure that you can do that because this should be relatively easy at this point. Now, are we done? We are not done. And why are we not done? Because there's absolutely no reason why this double bond couldn't be here or here. Okay, so there are equivalent resonance structures for this molecule. Okay, so for step seven, let's go ahead and draw the other resonance forms. Okay, so remember, I just arbitrarily chose to move this one and make a double bond here first. But somebody else might have used this lone pair 
to make a double bond here. Okay, so here's the second resonance structure. And then the third one, again, just now let's move an electron pair from that oxygen to form the double bond on this side. So now we're going to have three equivalent resonance structures, which we're going to relate with double-headed arrows. Okay? And notice we have all of our formal charges, all non-zero formal charges on our structure. Okay? Now this collection of three equivalent resonance forms fully describes the bonding in the carbonate ion. Okay? But are we done? Well, our problem asks us to calculate the partial formal charge and the carbon-oxygen bond order for this molecule. So we're not quite done. Okay? So let's calculate the partial formal charge, and we're going to use one drawing. It doesn't matter which one. Pick any one you want. I chose this one. Okay? And so what we're going to do is add up the charges on equivalent atoms. Which are the equivalent atoms? Well, they're all the oxygens that are involved in resonance, in these equivalent resonance forms. So there's two negative one charges, so that's negative two charge on equivalent atoms divided by one, two, three equivalent atoms. So we get a negative two-thirds charge on each of those oxygens. So negative two is smeared out between all three of these oxygens. So negative two-thirds formal charge on those oxygens. Now what about the bond order? So again, we're going to count up, we're going to use one structure, and we're going to count up all of the bonding electron pairs between carbon and oxygen. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's four bonding electron pairs, one, two, three equivalent carbon-oxygen bonds, and we know they're equivalent because they have the same bonding pattern, and they form equivalent resonance forms. There's three equivalent resonance forms, three equivalent bonds. So if we divide four by three, then we get four-thirds or one and a third bond between each carbon and oxygen. So this bond order is 1.33, this is 1.33, this is 1.33. Okay, so again, just reminders, you're not finished drawing Lewis structures in, for a molecule until you've added all the non-zero formal charges to the structure. To draw the most preferred structure that follows the octet rule, formal charge needs to be minimized, and all equivalent resonance forms need to be included. Okay, so that's if applicable. If there are equivalent resonance forms, you need to include them. And again, just a reminder, the best way to learn to draw Lewis structures is to practice.